This video is brought to you by Ground News. Today, Iran vows to retaliate against a deadly Israeli strike, Erdogan suffers defeat in Turkey's local elections, and Argentina and Colombia attempt to mend their diplomatic ties. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Tuesday, the 2nd of April, 2024. Iran has vowed to retaliate against what it said was an Israeli airstrike of its embassy in Syria, which killed seven military officials, including three senior Iranian commanders. One of those three was Mohammad Reza Zahidi, a top commander of Iran's elite Quds Force, and has been described as the most high-profile Iranian target killed since the assassination of General Qassam Soleimani by the United States in 2020. Iran's ambassador to Syria said Israeli warplanes struck a consular building to the embassy's compound. Now, Israeli strikes in Syria targeting Iran and its proxies are nothing new, but this would be the first time Israel has hit Iran's embassy compound and would represent a considerable escalation. Israel tends not to publicly discuss its actions in Syria, and in response to a question about the strike, an Israeli military spokesperson said, we do not comment on reports in the foreign media. However, a spokesperson did tell CNN that Israel believes the target was a military building of the Quds Force, disguised as a civilian building in Damascus, adding, according to our intelligence, this is no consulate and this is no embassy. So how will Iran respond? Well, one plausible response would be an increase in attacks by Iranian proxies against US targets in the Middle East, something that has already been happening since October the 7th. The Iranian response could also come through its powerful Lebanon-based ally, Hezbollah, which has already been engaging in near-daily cross-border fire with Israel. In the six months since October 7th, all-out war between Iran, its allies, and Israel has so far been avoided, and things have remained relatively contained with tit-for-tat engagements. But this escalation could well change that. In separate news from the war in Gaza, the humanitarian organization World Central Kitchen has confirmed that seven members of its team were killed by an Israeli strike in Gaza. The organization said those who were killed were from Palestine, Australia, Poland and the United Kingdom, and a dual citizen of the United States and Canada. In a statement, it said, the WCK team was traveling in a deconflicted zone in two armored cars branded with the WCK logo and a soft skin vehicle. Despite coordinating movements with the Israeli military, the convoy was hit as it was leaving the Deir Abala warehouse, where the team had unloaded more than 100 tons of humanitarian food aid. WCK described the attack as unforgivable and called it an attack on humanitarian organizations showing up in the most dire of situations where food is being used as a weapon of war, adding that it has immediately paused its operations. In response, the Israeli military says it is carrying out an in-depth examination at the highest levels, to understand the circumstances of this tragic incident. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. On Sunday, Turkey held local elections for its mayors and councillors. In a shocking result, the main opposition party, the centre-left CHP, beat President Erdogan's AKP party, winning nearly 40% of the popular vote and dominating in Turkey's big cities. In Istanbul, CHP candidate Ekrem İmamoğlu was re-elected for another term as mayor. And in Ankara, Turkey's capital, CHP candidate Mansu Yavash was also re-elected as mayor. Nationwide, this was the CHP's best result since 1977, and the first time Erdogan's AKP have lost a national election since their establishment in 2001. This was obviously a great result for the CHP, but especially so given their mediocre performance at last year's presidential and parliamentary elections, where Erdogan beat CHP candidate Kemal Kilic Teruyu by a 52 to 48 margin, and a pro-Erdogan coalition won a majority in parliament. The opposition were clearly helped by the economic situation in Turkey, which is currently suffering with an unpalatable combination of high interest rates and rising inflation. But the results are also proof that Kilic Teruyu wasn't a great choice of a candidate, and that the CHP performed better when the limelight is on their other big names like Imamoyu and Yavash. We have a full video covering these elections coming out on TLDR Global on Wednesday. Moving to South America now, where Argentina and Colombia have begun mending ties after Colombia expelled all of Argentinians' diplomats last week. The expulsion was in response to Argentinian President Javier Millet describing Colombian President Gustavo Petro 
as a terrorist murderer, referring to his past as a member of the M19 guerrilla movement. The two countries published a joint statement late on Sunday in which they said they had taken concrete steps to overcome any differences, including restoring their respective ambassadors. Miele has stoked tensions with Colombia since taking office in December, despite relations between the two countries historically being pretty stable. Miele, who is a former TV pundit known for his eccentricity, has also clashed with other Latin American leaders since his election. For example, after Miele's victory, Venezuela's socialist president, Nicolas Maduro, claimed the neo-Nazi extreme right had won power. And last week, Argentina accused Venezuela of cutting the electricity supply to its embassy. Last week, Mile also called Mexico's left-wing president, Andres Manuel López Obrador, ignorant, with AMLO responding that Mile despises the people. In other news, early this morning, North Korea fired at least one suspected intermediate-range ballistic missile towards waters off its eastern coast, sparking concerns among its western allied neighbours. The launch is reported to be related to a new engine for a hypersonic missile, which North Korea tested earlier on this year. In fact, this is Kim Jong-un's first test of ballistic missiles this year. Today's missile landed just outside of Japan's exclusive economic zone, which has outraged the Japanese government. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has called the launch absolutely unacceptable and a violation of UN Security Council resolutions. This new show of force comes just days ahead of parliamentary elections in South Korea. And in response to the launch, the US, South Korea and Japan conducted a joint aerial exercise. But North Korea's interests with its missile testing don't just lie in its backyard. The US, South Korea and Ukraine have all stated that the Kremlin has been using North Korean missiles for its war on Ukraine, and that last month's missile testing may have been a display intended for the Kremlin. And finally, in some uplifting news, researchers say that the population of grey whales along the US West Coast is showing signs of recovery, five years after an unusual mortality event saw hundreds wash up dead on beaches. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, or NOAA, the grey whale population in the region is estimated to be between 17,400 and 21,300, up from an estimated 13,200 to 15,960 last year. Amy Lang, a biologist from NOAA, said it's nice to be able to report some good news the last couple of years. Today's headline story about Israel and Iran has been covered extensively by more than 350 news outlets across the political spectrum. 30% of the reporting is coming from the left and 31% is coming from the right. If you compare the headlines, you'll start to see some interesting framing emerge. These insights are all possible thanks to our sponsor Ground News, a website and app developed by former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy data-driven objective way to read the news. Every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of the sources reporting, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. For example, on that story about Iran and Israel, not only are you able to compare the political bias and headlines, but you can also even check out the factuality information and the ownership. At this point, our viewers are well aware of our appreciation of Ground News. It's such an incredibly useful platform that captures information you can't get anywhere else. And best of all, they're currently offering 40% off their Vantage plan, which comes with unlimited access to all of their features. So go to ground.news slash TRDR or click the link down below to sign up for only $5 a month and help an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.